Welcome to Shared Insights, the podcast from BA Insight. My name is Pete Wright, and I am joined today by our CTO, Jeff Freed. Hello, Jeff. Hello. I always love working with you on this podcast, Pete. And this is another good one for you, Jeff. FindWise has released the results of their fifth annual enterprise search and findability survey that investigates how search is managed and used globally. There's some great news in the data, and to help us wade through the results and trends and findability and so much more, FindWise business area manager for SharePoint and Office 365, Michael Wendelius, joins us all the way from Copenhagen today. Michael, welcome to Shared Insights. Oh, thank you very much. It's a pleasure being here. Thank you for inviting me. Well, thank you for navigating the time zones with us. Uh, we, we sure appreciate you helping us out on this. I wonder, Jeff, before we dig into the survey, would you set the stage for this conversation? How did you come to, to work with FindWise? FindWise is one of the premier places on the planet for enterprise search and findability. And I've known them for quite some time. And they've known about BA Insight for quite some time, but only recently have we started actually working together. So we now have a partnership and a couple of joint customers because FindWise is really a services company that provides some great strategy and implementation services. And BA Insight is a product company. We've discovered we're very complementary. And Michael and I actually did a talk together back in October in in Sweden and uh I think we really hit it off. So th that was the beginning of a beautiful relationship. Definitely. And I mean, that uh, talk we did in October for about 250 people at a large internet conference in, in Sweden, uh, as you said, it really pulled, hit it off. We have, since we are in the Swedish market, we have received a, a lot of positive reactions and, and feedback for, from uh, from that event. So that was a really fun start to, to this collaboration that we're actually uh, working on right now, Jeff. Yeah, and my, my favorite memory from that was that it was literally in a movie theater. So we were on stage in front of the largest screen you could possibly imagine presenting on, and, and attendees were all in comfy chairs. They just needed popcorn to make the experience complete. Yeah, that's right. That was definitely the largest screen I have ever talked in, in, in front of. And probably I will never talk in, in, in front of a larger either in the future. Yes. And at that, at that time, you were just about to finish with this search and findability survey. So I'm excited to, to talk through it now that it's out. Maybe you can set the stage a little bit about, you know, why is this a, a search and findability survey? Let me just start by, by saying what, 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 it is, what it actually is. Uh, the search, Enterprise Search and Findability Survey is a questionnaire that uh, we at FindWise have uh, done f since 2012. That was the first year we did it. So we have done it for, for five years now. Uh, we have had approximately 200, 200 respondents each year. Uh, so there's quite a large number of people who has actually answered the questions in this in, in this questionnaire. And when we started it back in 2012, we saw that nobody did this from a market perspective, this kind of questionnaires or, or surveys uh, for search and findability. Of course, there was a lot of uh, service and things like that in, in the academics, but not on, from, from the business side uh, directly, to, to, directly to the market. So that's why we started it. And uh, during the years, we have received some really interesting results and, and trends, which we will talk more about uh, later. Yeah, what I love about this, it's now after five years, you can really examine trends clearly for the first time. So I think you've done the whole market a great service. And you've pulled out of some of the analysts and groups like IDC and AIM, I think, have noticed and are I've noticed that they're questions have gotten more realistic. I'm really glad to hear that uh, because that's also one of the reasons why we actually started this survey. Uh, exactly as BI Insight uh, always have been doing a lot of educations and inspiration on the market. That's that's something FindWise has done, done as well. And that's also a reason why we started this survey to to get more knowledge and share the message about search and findability onto the market and to new customers, of course. One thing that I admire about 
FindWise is that you take a business and strategy perspective, and you've discovered that talking about enterprise search and findability as two distinct things is valuable. And that's often, that's in, in the education process for people. I find I probably don't do that enough personally. M maybe you could, for listeners, describe that and say what you mean by findability and what is a useful mindset for them in, in this uh, milieu. Yeah, of course. I mean, I mean, when we're considering search here, um, I personally, a couple of years ago, uh, and I think many anybody else as well, are actually thinking about the search application, the search solution uh, itself, where you actually write your search query and you get your search result. And that's of is of course still one very important aspect of, of search and findability, but to get really relevant results uh, from the search uh, solution, you need to broaden the perspectives. And uh, we are usually talking about five different dimensions here. We are talking about business, business, users, information, technology, and organization. All of these five dimensions has something to do with uh, findability and also the search result itself. Considering information, for example, if you have a lousy uh, quality of your information, then it's, it will be difficult for the search engine to actually give a good search result. So all of these five dimensions or areas are interconnected to each other and they affect the search. And that's why we call it the enterprise search and findability uh, survey, because we want to have this broad perspective uh, on, on the area. Yeah, and it's um, something that I think is spot on uh, because people often, especially in IT, uh, think about it as the technology only. Part of what I love about this field is that it involves so many interdisciplinary pieces and everybody in the organization uses it. The content quality matters. The strategy and ownership and mindset, I think, are more important than the technology uh, when it when you look at what's correlated with success. Exactly, uh, and actually we see that as, as one of the, the big trends over these uh, five years we have done this survey. Uh, the first year in 2012, the, the main obstacle that were stated by, by the respondents were uh, the technical solution or the user interface itself. That was the main problem for, for them to achieve a really good search. Today, if we look at this year's survey, the number one obstacle to improve findability is lack of management attention or uh, limited internal resources or uh, uh, too small budget or more organizational or business oriented uh, tasks. So there you see the trend. We have actually gone from pure technical obstacles to a more business-oriented obstacles. I just want to make sure I understand that. Are you talking about that that there is a lack of sort of human custodianship of the data? In a way, yeah. Combined with uh, processes, established processes for how to actually work with and man maintain uh, the quality of the information internally. That's a really important aspect of findability that many organizations need to work with uh, much, much more than they actually do today. Yeah, and you know, I, personally, I found myself starting to give information strategy talks back a couple of years ago, because even though I'm a technologist, I kept seeing my customers struggle because they didn't have the resources to do the job, because they didn't have any strategy or backing. They sort of assumed they could buy something and plug it in and they were done. And then when they discovered they needed to maintain it and do what I call gardening, they had no budget, no time. You know, they, my, my interpretation of the changes over these five years you described is not that the technical obstacles have gone away. The technology has certainly gotten better, but the problem has also gotten harder because there's more tech, more information and more variety and velocity. It's, it's that people are more aware that having strategy and business backing is important. And there's the 
thing that just hits me between the eyes is how much there is a direct correlation between organizations that have a findability strategy and organizations that succeed with search and those that don't. Uh, if you don't have a strategy, you have, um, and actually you have this in the report, which I you know, highly recommend getting, is you tend to have, you know, if you have a strategy, over two thirds of organizations had a dedicated budget. But if you didn't have a strategy, like 10%. So having a budget, having staffing also correlates with success. So you definitely, know. You, you have a really good point there. And I mean, that's based on, on the findability survey, but also on our experience. I, I think we can say both Jeff and I that when you have that, the vision, uh, the clear goal of what you really want to attend, and, and you can also put pay, perhaps KPIs uh, on it, key performance indicators to actually measure the progress uh, and how far you have come towards uh, fulfillment of, of the vision and so on. That really helps in, in getting internal funding, internal resources, uh, and, and whatever you need to actually create the, a really good search and findability solution. Yeah, and I think, for example, when I go to search conferences like the Enterprise Search and Discovery Conference, a few years ago, I'll, I'll say it was dominated by whining by, by people who were search managers that were mostly complaining about the fact that their job was hard. And one of the changes I noticed is that certainly the more enlightened search managers are no longer whining. They're focused on driving the understanding of the value of findability. And because industries are so heavily information driven, if you can turn sort of the lip service that people give to information being an asset, into a reality that findability has significant value, which is true, then that challenge of you know being under-resourced and overly flogged sort of goes away and you're able to do a good job. Definitely. And uh, I mean, we are referring to the survey here all the time, but uh, th that's also a sign that, that there's a lot of interesting information and conclusions in the, in the survey. Uh, because what we also see in the survey is that Many of the organ organizations that have responded say actually more than 50% of it from, from last year's survey say that uh, they have a high dependency on findability, meaning that they are working much with information. Uh, they are dependent on finding the right information, information, the reuse of information and so on. But still, the users are complaining in a way about that it's difficult to to find information, uh, to find what they are looking for. So there's a gap here between the dependency on findability and, and the actual sol solutions that are that organizations have. And that's where all of these, this is where all of these trends come in, trying to explain why this situation uh, occurs within organizations and also why it's so important with the strategy or, or the vision for how to in the long term, in work with improvements of findability. I, I call this an expectation gap. And as you know, I have this yeah. search immaturity cycle because um, That's right. people tend to just replace the technology and view it as a technology problem rather than view it as a strategy problem and a practice problem and look at how to become more mature and more effective. So any education in this is is, is valuable, but really okay. seeing sort of new insight, both in what people are doing and also mapping this into how do you create a strategy and, and how do you become more mature in your use of search, I think is a, is a huge service for people. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking too, Jeff. And I, I, if I can just jump in here, you know, as I'm, as I'm mulling this over, hearing you two talk, I, I have to ask the question, you know, how do you help somebody build a strategy? I'm, uh, obviously, you, you do this, Michael. I mean, I'm, you have the data that says, you know, five years ago, 15% uh, of, your, of your organizations had a findability strategy. And now uh, it, it's, uh, here we are five years later, you've got uh, 50%. Uh, so how do you recommend uh, it, or organizations move forward with a findability strategy clearly something is going right it definitely are and, and of course we're working with, with search strategies as one part of it if you consider creating a search strategy for, from a search and findability perspective i would say that there's 
nothing strange about it or nothing other compared to creating a, a general search, uh, a general strategy. Uh, we often talk about that you, first of all, you need to identify your challenges and the, the information that's needed or even the possibilities. That That's a way of stating the current state or, or mapping the current state. Then you, in, in a second step, need to formulate and, and visualize the desired state. Where do we actually want to be in two years' time or five years' time or, or what, what kind of perspective you actually have? That's actually creating the, the vision and, and the, the effects that you actually want to create. In most cases, you will end up with a gap between the current state and the desired state. And there you have your uh, roadmap in a way identifying what, what you need to do internally in your organization to fulfill the vision and and create the effects that you actually want to to achieve in a very easy and short description create the current state visualize the desired state and then have a look at the gap between those two and there you have your your roadmap basically basically that's the standard components of, of a strategy. You make it sound so simple. <laughs> yeah, in theory, it's simple, uh, of course. But uh, w when you start looking at this from the, the five dimensions, as I men uh, mentioned before, for business, user information, technology, and organization, you often end up in quite detailed and complex discussions within the organization who, for example, is responsible for a search and findability solution. Is it IT? Is it communication? Is it some intranet editor? Or who can it be? And of course, there's no standard or general answer to that. That's depending on the organization you're working with. So when you go into detail, it becomes, of course, more and more complex, even though on the high level it sounds quite easy. Again, for the, for the listeners, I, I highly recommend getting and, and taking a look at the survey. And I also often teach the steps to a, a search strategy, but uh, really getting help with that is, is quite valuable. A little bit ago, uh, Jeff mentioned this concept of maturity, organizational maturity around this issue of search and, and a search strategy. How well did the data uh, address this idea of maturity and how it relates to search success. That's something that we, we also see in the survey and that's, all, that's also correlated to, to the strategy. And because we see that in the answers in, in the survey, uh, there are certain levels of maturity within organizations. If you look in the fu into the future based on these maturity levels, we see that targeted search solutions, as, as we call them, targeted in the sense that they are pointed or directed towards a specific user group, uh, they will be very important in the future. The one search for all thought that we have been working with for, for several, several years now, there are advantages with that, of course, uh, but it can also be too much information in, in the search solution, and that will make it hard for users to find what they are looking for. And then the targeted search application or targeted search solution could be one way to actually solve that, focusing on the specific need for a specific user group. That's something that you, we are looking into in the strategy or the vision and where we can actually define and prioritize different user groups and different needs of information uh, within an organization. Yeah, that's something that um, I'd say has been known by a few folks for a long time, whether you call them search-driven applications as I did for a while or info apps or whatever term, it's it's because there isn't one thing, they often go by different names, that it's not a practice a lot of people take up. They sort of assume that I can do one, I call it one ring to rule them all, a sort of the Lord of the Rings strategy for search, you know, go index everything possible and put it all together. That's, I guess, better than having completely separate silos. But if you can identify specific audiences with specific needs, you can do a much better job in relevance and tailoring and grooming. So I'm not surprised that that showed up in your analysis as sort of the most mature stage. I mean, they connect that to, 
to techn the technology dimension, uh, we also have a lot of opportunities from a technical point of view from Microsoft, for example, on, on the Microsoft platform with uh, SharePoint search and the solution for creating hybrid search, which I think you have been talking about in, in an earlier podcast here. Yes, we've, yeah. we have had uh, a great podcast with, with Vlad Kotronescu here, as well as one with Mikhail Svensson and Neil Hodgkinson about Microsoft hybrid search. It's a favorite of mine. And actually at BA Insight, we're seeing a lot of great uptake for what Microsoft calls cloud hybrid search. We've got, you know, one of, I was at one of our customers two weeks ago, and they have the the largest cloud index on the planet, or so I'm told, with a lot of external content. So that's where, from a BA Insight perspective, where our connectors as well as the ability to add structure comes in. Yes, it's exciting from a technology standpoint, especially if you do it in the context of the strategy maturity stages you've laid out. I, I even go that far that I say that this is kind of a, a missing piece in, in, in the collaboration puzzle uh, that we have seen o over the last year. Uh, many organizations and people and consultants have, have been talking about collaboration for, for many, many years. With hybrid search, we can actually integrate the different sources uh, where, where you, an organization have information and make it available through, for example, a targeted search solution for the user without the user needing to bother about in which system a specific piece of information is, is located. And that what I think is really interesting uh, about this. Uh, and that's what I mean with the, the, the missing piece in the puzzle that are actually there now. Uh, so, it's not, it's, so it's not a missing piece in the puzzle anymore, even though it has been been for a couple of years, perhaps. The approach of using it within a strategy, I, I, I like a lot. The world naturally lives in silos. Within the Microsoft stack, there's too many different collaboration tools, but that's true in the world in general. People use different things for different purposes, depending upon preference as well. So if you can collect and present the information in targeted applications independent of where it comes from, that goes a long way. You know, we have folks that are using Slack and Jive as well as uh, Microsoft SharePoint and indexing that and providing something for a technical communities as a knowledge base, something for uh, support and service. That, that's a really good pattern. And actually, Mikhail, we're, we're um, we should factor this into our upcoming uh, webinar. I think we That's great, right. We have, we have a great webinar coming up at the end of March. Uh, we'll put that in the show notes here. And the two of us will be talking about applying cloud hybrid search. So uh, you just gave me some ideas right there. Perfect. <laughs> That's great. And we can continue the, this specific topic uh, if, if we're talking about the, the, the Microsoft context. You can also view Delve, for example, as one search application, uh, which is much more proactive. And that's something I also is really interested about for the future, this uh, possibility to actually present information for a user that he or she perhaps has not even thought about that she, uh, one could search for. Delve is actually one way to, to present that information in, in that proactive way. And I know you, you are at BI Insight are, are working quite a lot with, with that kind of te technology. Yeah, you'll, you'll hear us talking more and more about relevant, interactive, and proactive as key attributes. I guess my marketing folks have taught me that everything has to come in threes. It has to be <laughs> yeah. three points. <laughs> so right. um, that fits quite well. And we, we had um, Mark Cashman from Microsoft on this very podcast talking about Delve and advances in Delve. Um, I'm really excited because we're at, at the beginning of a new wave, uh, not just with Microsoft. There's a whole wave of more, I'll say, intelligent search. What I would counsel people is just to watch out because along with any excitement of a wave like this comes a lot of overhype. I was just asked to write something. I have, I'll, I'll put that in the show notes too. You know, I was, 
a two-part article about intelligent cognitive AI-based search, because the more of these uh, buzzwords you put together, the less meaningful the sentence actually is. Unless you do it in threes. Yes, exactly. Yeah. All we do, always do is, and you're a wise guy, and Jeff, you're, you're a wise man. To be careful is, is very important when you start to talk about new possibilities with technology and so on. Yeah, and I'm for, sure you see this at Findways a lot, is that right. there, there are people that um, are enamored of a new wave of technology, which you don't want to discount because it's very exciting. But technology is only one of the factors. Exactly. It's, it's, it's one, of, one of the five that we are talking about. And w when I am out talking to customers, we, I also see uh, that many of them are talking about, talking about this, but perhaps from a business perspective. Customers to us are talking about how they want to improve their decision support or customer service or increase the innovation or, or things like that within an organization. We often end up in, in discussions about how we can use search technology to actually accomplish this. And then we have left the, the, the old classical business needs of increased knowledge sharing and, and greater reuse of content and, and so on. And have started to to work and elaborate with, with a complete new set of business needs in, in combination with the new possibilities for, from a technology point of view, of course. Last year, Gartner, for example, they even re renamed the, the search technology or the, the search engine to the Insight engine. And that's only one example of how this trend that the, the business drives, the business needs are growing uh, is a very clear trend, uh, at least what we see uh, here in, in the Nordic countries. That, that's cool. Well, what, what do you think gets in people's way of succeeding with findability? If, if you were to try to characterize one or two of the, the obstacles that prevent people from succeeding? Uh, that's, that's, of course, a really good question. But in a way, I sh the first thing I should say is n not to try to solve everything in, in a first step. You need to prioritize. Today, there are so much information within an organization, huge amounts of information, and it's growing day by day. And if you want to create one solution that, that solves all needs for all users, then you will be working for, for an endless period of time, then it's better to, as, as we talked about before, to prioritize and, and select uh, a few prioritized user groups or, or information needs and start by that. And when you're finished, when you have created a solution that, that works both from a technical point of view and a business point of view and so on, then you can move on to, to, the, to the next user group, to the next priority level, so, so, to, so to say. That would actually be the one of the first advices I, I would give. So what gets in people's way is they are trying to take on too much to try to view everything as the same problem and therefore end up doing nothing well. Yeah, that's that's right. And that's, of course, also connected to the strategy that we talked about earlier. Uh, what's stated in the strategy? How, how clear is the strategy about these kind of prioritizations? Uh, does the strategy say we should have one search solution uh, that fits everybody? Well, then that's where the problem actually is. Then the the strategy isn't clear enough, or it isn't prioritized on, on a on a level that's good enough uh, within the organization. Well, I, I agree okay. with that for sure. I, I think that one piece of advice is to take a, a short period and, and look at where you are, where you want to go, and the roadmap. Look at the strategy, because that is key to unlocking a lot of other obstacles. And it doesn't have to be a you know multi-year, 400-page strategy. It can be a relatively simple way of laying things out, but it has to be a living document. Um, so building a strategy, building a business justification, and then viewing it as a continuous process. That's a that's, that's the advice I, I often give, even as a technologist. Um, I love to build things personally, and I love to provide the missing pieces 
But if you start out with the technology, it's sort of upside down. So starting with the business challenge and the strategy is is uh, is more effective. But we are the same there. We have, we we both really like to to create that kind of solutions that actually help users or or create some kind of kind of value within an organization. That's the really fun part about working with IT, actually. Yeah. yeah so, so we have a cross cross. Uh, Atlantic Love Fest here, and I, I'm looking forward to <laughs> continuing it in our upcoming webcast. The uh, upcoming webinar is coming up on March 28th. You can just swipe over in, in, into the show notes on your podcast player there and tap the link to register now. You can find it right now in your show notes. Uh, March 28th uh, should be a great conversation. Uh, I, this We'll call this chapter one, or this this will be the prologue to the webinar coming up. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah, every every good story needs a prologue. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for your uh, time and wisdom, as always. Uh, Mikhail Wendelius, uh, coming all the way from Copenhagen today. You're on the road uh, as it is, uh, normally based in Sweden. Now you're in Copenhagen podcasting with us. We sure appreciate you taking time out of your travel schedule to share your insights on this great survey. Thank you very much for having me. It was a pleasure. I hope this is not the last time we we, uh, we speak on this these subjects. Definitely not. Uh, Jeff Fried, uh, thank you so much. As always, uh, another great conversation under your belt. Uh, absolutely. I, uh, I I love these discussions because they're my favorite subject and always open and actually eager to hear stories from listeners on any of these subjects. Absolutely. And also in the show notes, we will put the contact link uh, for just how to do that, how to reach out to Jeff and share your insights. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, and uh, also, I didn't mention in the show notes, you'll also find the link to the survey we've been talking about on the show today. Uh, so you can jump over to FindWise and grab the data yourself. Thank you, everybody. On behalf of Mikel Vandalius and Jeff Fried, I'm Pete Wright, and we'll catch you next time right here on Shared Insights, the podcast from BA Insight. BA Insight.